Hello everybody, hope you can hear me, hope everything is working well. So, hello, hello, hello. Uh, it feels like Christmas, it's the final day of Advent of Code 2023, even though it's June of 2024, it doesn't matter. It's still uh, nice to uh, finally finish up what I started uh, and finally reach the conclusion of Advent of Code for last year. So there is just one simple, or not simple, but it's last problem to solve. And I thought it would be nice to solve it as a live coding session. Even of course I, I uh, did pre-read pre -read the description and uh, the problem to understand what I will be doing, because otherwise uh, it would be a very boring session of me uh, being completely uh, lost. So uh, I have some idea how to solve it, so we will see if it works out uh, or not. So the, today's problem, and I hope you can see me, it seems, ah, seems to be streaming correctly. So uh, the, the problem that we will be solving today is an overload. And, uh, the, and if you hear some, some noises behind me, it's uh, because of the wind. Uh, but we'll have to live through that because otherwise I would be just uh, completely sweaty because it's very hot here. So <laughs> it will be useful to have uh, some air inside. So anyways, uh, snow overload. Uh, the problem is basically dealing with uh, undirection, uh, no, so undirected uh, graph. Basically you have a graph of different nodes in a system and we have a wiring diagram which tells us which nodes are connected to which other nodes. So uh, basically the input looks like this. We have a node JQT connected to these nodes and so on. So it's basically a list of nodes connected to other nodes. And our goal and our task here is to figure out uh, which connections we need to break so that those uh, nodes break up into two large groups and once they do uh, we need to multiply the sizes of those groups to get the uh, the solution to the problem and uh, basically the, this tells us that when we disconnect some free wires it breaks up the graph into two components that are completely unconnected and each component will have some specific size and this this problem is kind of complicated because it's not just a single wire. If it was just a single wire, you would have to just find the, that single wire that, that will disconnect the two uh, components. But it's two. Uh, it's not uh, not just one. There's not two, not, not just two, but three wires that we need to cut, which makes uh, things a little more complicated, so to speak. So we need to figure out a better way to do it. And... Uh, there is actually many different ways. Apparently, there's there's a lot of probabilistic uh, algorithms that are not that have a certain likelihood to uh, give you the right solution after several runs or m many runs actually. And uh, those uh, there is a Krager algorithm. I'm not sure if I have it here open. Uh, Krager's algorithm, which exactly does something like this, it uh, compresses the graph by removing edges and replacing them with one single node. So it basically merges two nodes that are neighboring into one and it does this over many runs. And as it does this, it always ends up with one single edge and that single edge over many runs will give you uh, that minimum cut the, the, the most likely edge that will uh, create that cut that uh, can break up the char uh, graph into two components. So, uh, kind of mathematical stuff. And uh, I don't like that that much because I'm not a really math guy that much. So, uh, that's one solution. Another solution is uh, visualization because there are different uh, graphing uh, softwares that can do this basically they, that you feed it uh, nodes and edges and it will visualize that graph 
and then when you see it you will very very easily find the right edges to be cut to actually break up into those two components because apparently the main input not the small one but the main input of the of the problem is very saturated there is a lot of edges between all of those um, nodes so it's a kind of easy to see those that are those edges which are actually breaking up the two components so that's another option but because of the nature of the input that there is a lot of connections it's actually possible to do it in another way entirely and that's by uh, by making uh, by by finding the, the farthest possible nodes that are in the graph and then removing the path between them, one of the paths between them. And when you do this three times, you will definitely remove those bridges that are connecting the two components. So, so when you do it, uh, essentially you will find the two components and then you can find uh, the sizes of them. And that's what I will attempt to do here uh, in this session and we'll see if it works out well or not so gonna be fun <laughs> so let's let's try it i actually can uh, display this uh, streaming which will be better so that you can see any potential chat messages if they come so let's see hopefully it will work all right so let's see how we can do this shall we so i will take the whole input of the problem then put it here and now we need first uh, thing that we need is to create a class that will uh, store the vertex the node and and its edges so i will do uh, public record uh, vertex which will have a specific name and it will have a list all right so maybe we're back hopefully sorry about that issue it was uh, it was a network outage here so it unfortunately meant that i lost my connection and so now we're, we have to kind of restart a little bit. So hopefully it will all work out fine from now on. So we're, uh, let's go back to where we were. So uh, I was trying to explain the data structure that we will be using for this problem. So I have this uh, vertex record that we will be using to store uh, the individual vertices of the problem and then uh, the neighbors are the connections or we can actually do uh, connections with better name connections uh, because those are wires so it's it's uh, wired connections between the edges so now what we need to do is to create some kind of dictionary of vertices exactly and we will have to read the input so uh, input it's gonna be file read all lines input txt so i will read all the input and now let's do a for uh for for each line in input I'll, uh, read read the line but split by something else split uh, line split by there is a colon and then we will have the name which is this one and then we'll have the connections and that's not by uh, this but by space and i will split it and remove the empty entries so this will give us the connections to that vertex and then we will have to make sure that we connect them all so for each our connection in connections uh, if well, I will make sure first that the vertex is created so if 
it doesn't exist in the list yet. Uh, vertex. Oh, I close this. Uh, so if it's not in the list yet, I will add it. And for each of those connections, I will also add the connection. So we add the connection and then we add a uh, bi-directional connection to that specific vertex. So both have the connection between each other. So this is the way we do it. All right, so this will, this should be reading the input file. And now what we will have to do is I will uh, always start with a node, a vertex, so let's uh, start with current will be uh, vertices, values first, doesn't really matter. And we will be doing something three times, so we will be doing this three times. And we will be going from that current vertex and searching for the farthest, wa farthest vertex from that current vertex. So, find farthest uh, from current and we will, uh, as a return of that, we need to know which vertex is the farthest and we need to know uh, which connections we took to get there, I think, yeah? So let's just uh, think through that. We need to, so it's going to be the farthest and path. So that would be like the return. And uh, we have the, we'll have vertex farthest. And it's going to, then we have a path of path like this farthest uh, from source so uh, I don't I'm not sure what this is but let's see what it generated sometimes it's useful at least parts of it so we have we have uh, okay so we have a uh, list of visited we will be doing breath first search because we need to kind of do a wave from the source to uh, mark the ones that are first in distance and so on. So we'll have also distances. And yeah, so that's weird. Uh, but you definitely don't need this thing. And I would say we would like to have something like a vertex or dictionary previous yeah so we are get getting or not really this way maybe yeah yes that's fine so we need to for for a given vertex we need to know where we were before we get we go there so we need distances we need uh something to mark the farthest so far and we need to figure out yeah we'll be pushing uh, not this that's ugly let's just push the vertex that we are processing and we need to tr keep track of what uh, vertices we already visited so queue source and when we dequeue the source the, the vertex like current we add it to visit it. Yeah, I've, uh, they are actually there on YouTube. You can find them on my profile. There is actually a playlist uh, specifically with all the innovative code videos. Uh, let's see. Should be. Where do I have it? There's a playlist on my profile, which is called Event of Code 2023, and then you'll find all of them uh, neatly arranged uh, one after another. So you, that should be all you need. Uh, all right.
Right, so then let's continue here. We have the visited ones contains current, then we continue, otherwise we add it. And then we will be go going through all the possible connections to add. And well, I guess we also have to set the distance. So distance, uh, right. And previous for sources now and distances uh, source is equal to zero. Right, and this is actually nullable, so let's mark it as that. Okay, so uh, then we go through the connections. So starting there, we'll go and if not visited, if you, if you already visited that connection, then we don't have to process it anymore. And if Well, distances doesn't contain connection. Yeah, basically it's the same thing, but uh, we can we can do it without this. Yeah. So if we, we increase the distance, we we set the previous to current, and we also enqueue the connection. And uh, finally, what do I want to do here? If it's the this uh, farthest node so far, we set it as the farthest connection. So when we finish this. We should be able to reconstruct that path. So we'll take the link of, um, we'll create a list, and I will be adding the individual vertices. So while we don't get to null, we'll be adding the previous node on that path until we construct it all, and then finally return it. It's gonna be an array, right? So then that should be it. And what is it complaining here about? It's about... All right, I named the same thing, so... Start vertex. Right, that should be fine. Farthest vertex, and... What is complaining now about? All right, let's do a war here. And this is gonna be declared in the scope, right? Why? Uh, what am I missing here? That should be fine, all right? I don't see a problem here. Where do we see that current? Oh, I see here. Oh, okay. All right. Hmm. Path vertex. All right, so let's see. Like this. That should be okay. All right, now that we do have this, now we do. Uh, we have to remove the edges between the. Remove the connections between uh, the vertices on the path. So for length, we'll start on. And the second node, so far uh, from will be this, two will be this, and we will be removing the connection between them so that it's no longer there. And we know that uh, somewhere on that path was our bridge between the components. So when we do this three times, we should be, we should have removed. Uh, the three bridges that are between components, and as long as we did disconnect some vertex completely, which hopefully didn't happen, uh, because it's very saturated graph with many edges, so uh, they should have multiple connections. We should hopefully be able to see the right. Uh, we have two components that are completely separate. Then I will set the start vertex to be the farthest vertex again, so we can process it three times in a row. Uh, so when this is done, we have two components, hopefully, and now we need to just uh, figure out the size of one of them. So I'll uh, select the component. 
representative uh, representative uh, it will be for example star vertex whatever doesn't really matter and then we will find uh, we'll have to component size calculate component size with that component representative and then when we fi fin finalize the uh, calculation we need to multiply that with uh, vertices count minus component size because we need to calculate we multiply it with the size of the other component that we have so now the only thing that remains is to implement this method which will be calculating the size of the component let's move it down there so it's neater and figure this out okay so what we can do there very easily is basically just do either bfs or dfs the first search through that graph to find all the components so I'll visit it all visited ones and we enqueue the component representative and add it to the visited and while q count greater than zero we will uh the queue and all the connections we will uh, if it's not if it's visited we continue and if not we will add it to visit it and in queue so it's get it gets processed later so ultimately we should be done and return visited count and that should be the size of our component so hopefully if everything went smoothly here we might have a solution there so let's let's see what happens if i run it minus six that's definitely not right so let's see what's happening there minus six that's weird uh let's see let's see this is okay uh, i have this so let's come Let's first uh, run it here to so see if the reading in works fine. It seems okay. Uh, connections seems fine at least. So that's okay. Now after this Okay, so there's something wrong there. Source is null. How did that happen? Call stack. Uh, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. How did that happen? Coming from null vertex. Okay, that's interesting. So something is happening incorrectly there. Component size is 701. And total number of components is. Oh, this seems. Oh, I. Oh, <laughs> that's not the right one. I wanted to multiply. I was subtracting. And okay, so that was a. Not smart mistake, uh, and we have this number. So let's see what if that is correct or not. Let's see what happens. And it is correct. So we have solved this problem, and let's continue part two. 
and yeah, we are on 49 stars, but we need power of 50 stars. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's uh, fine. We can restart the system and push the big red button. And we are done. So we supplied all the 50 stars and restarted global snow production, which makes uh, Christmas finally happen in June of 2024. And it's finally finished. So it's great. I'm very happy that uh, it finally all came together, even though it took me quite a while, but it's done now. So yeah, it's, it's cool. <laughs> it's a good feeling to have it. What is that? Oh, those underlines are Easter eggs, apparently. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're done. We're done. Uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, so I can officially mark uh, Advent of Code 2023 as completed. It was a long, long run, but finally we are here. And 